What's up, you guys? Another car chat. <laughs> I got some feedback from many of you that you like my car chats, so I'm gonna keep doing them. If you don't like them, you can just scroll along. But um, I know I'm sharing a lot of messages about fat loss right now. What's up, Lindsay? Um, but that's what's on my mind right now. People are like, hey, can you talk about building muscle or some other things? I'm like, I will, but as things are, while I'm in it myself, and as things are coming up for me that I'm like, these are good insights, you know, to share like what works, I'm gonna share. Um, so, <laughs> you love my car chat things, Lindsay. Okay, so who wants to guess what my number one fat loss tip is? Do I have any guesses? Curious, Lindsay, what do you think? Number one fat loss tip. Hey guys, thanks for joining me on a Friday night. I'm headed back over to the gym for a little nighttime cardio sesh. My, um, so my bikini competition, if you don't know, what's up, Aaron? Here's Aaron Day, Fat for Weight Loss, guys. He's an amazing keto dessert blogger, like amazing. I don't wanna think about you right now. I don't wanna think about any of your blog posts or any of your recipes at all right now. <laughs> I've got like a Pavlov effect. I see your name and I'm like, yummy desserts. Anyway, um, follow him if you want amazing, like sugar-free dessert recipes, guys. Um, fat for Weight Loss right there. But I uh, hope you're doing well too, Aaron. Um, eat more, nope, well, Sort of, that, that, that's involved with it. <laughs> Portion control, be in a deficit. Yeah, these are all, they're all kind of intertwined. Calorie deficit, don't eat after dinner. That is, n that is another one that is extremely helpful, but that's not my number one, it's not my number number one, but that is very, not eating after dinner will work. <laughs> it will work. Um, eat most of your calories around your workout. That's a, that is a good tip. That is not my number one fat loss tip though. Any other guesses? These are all wonderful. I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna let all of you guys go. You're giving like all the best advice ever. Get sleep. That is also another very good tip. Hugely important for fat loss, but it's not my number one. Eat foods that satisfy your hunger. That is pretty close. Hydrated, that is also very important. <laughs> Mind control, that when you get to the next level, yep. <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and tell you guys. Low stress, yeah. And and that is a really important one. Um, my, my coach right now is like, I just, you can't be stressed. Like, like anything to make you less stressed is really important right now. So that's also important. Consistency, pro protein is also Consistency and protein are also very important. This is just me personally. I'll go ahead and tell you guys. This is my number one fat loss tip. This, and I'm talking, this is from like, I've never even tried to lose weight in my entire life. Where do I start, right? You're with some, or all the way to, I'm super advanced in nutrition. For me, anyway, what I have seen wild amounts of success from is by adding in vegetables. I know that sounds so simple, but that mentality of how can I add nutrition to this? How can I add nutrients and fiber that will fill me up to my food is something you can do anywhere, anytime. It doesn't matter what approach you're doing unless it's carnivore, but any, any other dietary approach, you can do this. You're going to um, a restaurant, you can do this. You're eating at home, you can do this. You're snacking in your car, whatever, you can do this. But adding in vegetables, the reason you knew I was gonna say that, <laughs> Lindsay, yeah, because because adding, adding, first of all, the word add in, add, add, add. How positive is that? First, we just got out of restrictive mentality. Did I say you can't have pizza? Did I say you can't have donuts? Did I say any of that? No, but guess what? When you're when it's pizza night with your family, or you're at some big like family event or some restaurant, and there's all the lasagna, and you're really freaking hungry, or there's pizza or whatever it is, burgers and fries, and you order yourself the biggest, most giantest salad that you can. And for me, I'm always like, can I have like how big is one protein serving? Okay, can I have like four of those? <laughs> like, put just I want the biggest, healthiest salad ever, or whatever vegetable I can get my hand on. Go to the sides menu at a restaurant or at home. Okay, you're gonna have whatever you're gonna have. Can you like quadruple the size of that with vegetables? You're gonna cut into body fat. And the reason I'm sharing this is because I'm on a calorie deficit right now, like a pretty significant one. And there's some days where I don't bulk it up with vegetables. Those days suck. 
Do you know how hard it is to be consistent at a calorie deficit when you're starving? It's so hard. And the days that I bulk things up with vegetables, it's almost easy. It is like night and day. So for dinner, I just had like eight ounces of mahi mahi and like, <laughs> you know, the frozen rice cauliflower from Costco, like a whole bag, <laughs> a whole like, you know, they're like this big, like bag of that and a bunch of spinach and like half of a big onion chopped up. And I mean, that's so much food. And, the, and scientifically, the reason this helps so much is because actually when your stomach expands, they have shown in research that that drops ghrelin the actual mechanical expansion of your stomach being full will drop ghrelin your hung hunger hormone so i may be more sensitive to than the, to this than others i'm not saying this is the, the truth for everyone um but it is for a lot of people and i'm telling you like as somebody who has gone from basically like i was never obese but i was overweight my whole life like that was definitely I was like I'm going to be moderately just overweight my whole life I can't figure this out I'm never gonna be like fit I'm never gonna really lose weight like going from that to on the other side of that I'm telling you that the vegetables were the ticket and that was it for me at first like it's also such a loving beautiful mindset um back when the first time I lost weight the first time I started to get into this I was like growing some of my own vegetables and there's just something about like chopping up and being creative and like adding those in it's so self-loving and then on the flip side of it also like you're you're getting full for very little calories and you're packing in nutrients vitamins minerals it's it's so key it is like literally the secret it's it's and it's so freeing you don't have to be like so psychotic about every little thing if you can just bulk your food up with vegetables and you can do that anywhere can you butter your salted broccoli I mean yeah I, I would say so just being mindful of overall calories if you're doing half a stick of butter a day and <laughs> you're not losing weight and you might want to back off on that a little bit but yeah if you're just starting with vegetables and you think vegetables don't taste good I would definitely recommend like adding fat to them you will change your mind um carnivore was so hard because I love my low carb veggies eating a pound of meat plus was too weird yeah I'm not I am not a fan of long-term carnivore dieting personally but that's fine if it's your jam if it's working for you and you love it go for it just know that when you start to reintroduce other foods it's going to be quite the freaking process because your microbial diversity is going to be really low <laughs> so it's going to be like very very gradual very small amounts allowing the enzymes and to to upregulate to break down um uh carbohydrates again and then also just to increase the microbial diversity and like wow i have heard some nightmare stories honestly <laughs> so just be wise if you're doing that um yeah I, so it's really that simple how can i add, i remember also when i was first starting protein shakes i'd be like why not just add as much freaking spinach and even like mixed leafy greens they taste like nothing like why not just like pack as many of those suckers in here as i can they're like no calories practically and i'm just getting all these nutrients um and then again like any any vegetables so packed with fiber that fiber fills you up and the insoluble fiber it you you don't digest it it slows everything down so instead of you just like rapidly digesting it's it's a slower process so you stay fuller for way longer not to mention you get fuller in the first place while you're eating your meal from the bulkiness of the fiber and there's so many nutrients in it and if you want to get all woo woo with me we talk plant intelligence and get all sorts of weird <laughs> but i'll save that for another another live <laughs> but on from a fat loss perspective i say it can be hard or it can be like a hundred times easier and packing in a bunch of vegetables makes it a hundred times easier so um, mushrooms are another great thing they're one of the very few food sources of vitamin D um, I mean just from a mineral perspective it's insane and I know a lot of you guys are like yep 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 so um, pack it in and you can do it in so many ways you can do like a big old veggie egg scramble you can do like a stir fry and make it like Asian you can do um, like I like to do the spaghetti squash and do spaghetti uh, marinara sauce with ground turkey or ground beef and like do it that way so it's kind of Italian like you can get creative with it you know um, 
good. Yeah, yeah. So just do like a veggie challenge, right? How many, how much more can I pack into this? Um, raw honey, your thoughts on raw, are you asking from, you're suggesting raw honey or ask my thoughts? I'm not sure, but I am a huge fan of honey. I think bees are one of the most incredible like gifts and mother nature. And you know, something that's really interesting about honey is that it's actually a, um, uh, monosaccharide. So it's like one sugar chain and it has a very low glycemic response. Magic nature. <laughs> yeah. So if you're going to eat sweet, like I am a huge fan of honey. And although I'm not using it right now because I'm on like really strict nutrition for this bikini comp, I give my kids like raw honey, like plain Greek yogurt with raw honey is like a staple in my house for my kids. They love it so much. And I feel good about giving it to them. Um, if you're trying to get your kids to eat healthier, by the way, that is like a little tip. Like they love that so much. We just go, we go ham on it. It's like lots of honey. Would you like some yogurt with your honey? <laughs> and, um, and then like berries and, um, I'll get like the kind granola for them on top and they're just like, Ugh, they love it. Their little yogurt parfaits. Um, you can't get your boyfriend to eat mushrooms and it makes you so sad. I know some people just, some people just hate them. I'm like, I, I have a hard time understanding if you can cook them well and get them all seasoned. They're so freaking good. And if you want to get all nerdy, you can go to like a little bit nicer grocery store and get a variety of all these different kinds of mushrooms. Mushrooms are antiviral. They're antiviral, not awesome. And, and antibacterial, which is really cool. And they are vitamin D source. Um, and they're like practically no calories. And I think they make everything taste amazing. I actually, actually will just like saute up the season and saute them up plain <laughs> and eat them. Sometimes I love them that much, but yeah, raw honey does not hit glucose. It does not raise your blood sugar like glucose. Yeah. Look at the glycemic index. It's, it's super fascinating. I'm like, in case you guys haven't noticed about me, I am like, I bow down to mother nature. We don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> okay. Like we, we don't know how the body works. We don't know how the world works. We don't know how nature works. We don't know anything. We are like infants, infants. <laughs> We're just like, have no clue. So all we can do is look at patterns that mother nature has given us. Like we just showed up here. And as much as like people would like to say they know everything and how we all got here and all the Sure. Okay. That's fine. But like, we don't, we still don't know how it works. <laughs> Nobody knows how it works. So we got to look to mother nature for what she's showing us, you know, and bees are there, right? Honey, uh, let's look at sugar cane. For example, um, sugar is super processed. Is sugar cane bad for you? No, do some research, research on sugar cane. It is almost 100% fiber. It's like 99% fiber. So people who live in areas where sugar cane grows, all they do is suck on it a little bit and they're getting vit, uh, minerals and vitamins out of it. Um, while they suck on it and get like very, very teeny tiny bit of sweetness. It's just like, it's like a fibrous, you know what I mean? Like, have you ever cut up ginger? It's kind of like that. Like, <laughs> so the fact that we like ultra processed it and we're eating it in hordes, that's why it's bad for us. It's not that, it's not that sugar cane itself is bad for us. It's loaded with iron. That's cool. I did not know that. Um, so yeah. Um, okay. I think that's it. Just break up with sugar. Yeah. I think like now I'm not, I'm not in the like anti sugar camp. Like I'm not like, um, just like avoid it like the plague. I like to be more like have a healthy relationship with all foods. Like I don't, I'm not in abstinence, um, uh, way of thinking because I feel like that creates restrictive mindsets. And then when people do have a little bit, they like feel bad and there's guilt and shame that's unnecessary. But in general, like there's so many other options now that you really don't need to eat sugar. Um, you love sugar cane. That's how you got so lean and shredded. <laughs> Just biting on that sugar cane all day. Yeah. I say if you're going to eat sugar, you got to get you. It has to only be in sugar cane form. How about that? <laughs> Order yourself sugar cane. You just gnaw on that stuff all day long. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I think that's pretty much it. So I'm just, I guess I'm encouraging you this week, this weekend, every single time you eat, think how can I add more vegetables to this? Cause I'm anytime I've been really lean in my life, I am eating so many vegetables. <laughs> like vegetables are like my best friend life, you know? And there's so many, so many easy options now for convenience. Costco is a wonderful resource for this. Um, I get like organic rice cauliflower that's frozen. So it's always ready. Um, I also, they have like zucchini spiral zucchini noodles ready to go. 
Um, Trader Joe's is also a really great place for convenience vegetables. Everything's chopped up. Um, even like a um, butternut squash at Costco. Oh my gosh. It's so worth it for them to cut that up. Cutting up unless you want to work out. <laughs> if you want a bonus workout, you can just buy a butternut squash and try to cut that sucker. But it's like, these are barriers. You know what I mean? So remove the barriers. If you're like, I'm not ever going to feel like doing that, like invest in the pre-chopped stuff. So you at least do it, you know, or when you are cutting up vegetables, let's say you're cutting up cucumbers, cut up like a whole bunch of them. So they're just in the fridge ready to go. Right. And put some tahini on there. I just posted about that. In my story tahini is so good. Chili lime salt is so good on like fresh vegetables, especially cucumbers. Um, so yeah, even like, even when you're making something that is vegetables, think, Ooh, what other vegetables could I add to this? Right. So like I keep a bags of all kinds of frozen vegetables in my freezer and then also fresh ones. Broccoli slaw, slaw is a really easy thing. That's like ready to go. You just put it in a bowl and add your protein and some, um, like apple cider vinegar, um, liquid aminos, uh, whatever you want on that. A teeny bit of like sesame oil is so good on making something taste really Asian. Yeah, squash noodles are so good. Um, I do have a spiralizer that you can get this on Amazon for like 30 bucks. Those are really fun to do. Sweet potato noodles are so good and you can just fry them in a, just in the pan right on your stove, like in some avocado oil or something. And they're so delicious. Make sure you put lots of salt on them. But yeah, it just get creative and it's fun. Like it makes you feel like it's like being artistic. You know, so you're getting to express yourself and it's like this really self loving thing. And then you're getting full on very low calorie things that are full of fiber that are keep you full and packed with nutrients. So if I was eating right now, if I was eating all processed foods, like I would be starving, like starving, like I would want to kill someone. But when I pack in those vegetables, I'm like, I can do this. So if you know somebody who's like just starting, like I, to be honest, like I was just meeting somebody the other day and I could tell like they, they, they were like step one with nutrition and they're like, what do you think I should do? And it was like, it was a cool moment for me. Cause I was like, gosh, man, where do I start somebody that's like, they're on like ground zero, right? Cause most of my clients being real are not on ground zero. They're like nerds, <laughs> they're health nerds, you know? Um, but ground zero, if you have somebody who's ground zero, just that's my biggest tip. I really, I really do think just tell them, challenge them to how many vegetables can they add to every single thing that they eat. All right. And then if you pack protein with that too, man, you're going to be sitting pretty lean proteins. I, I am actually a fan of like the pescatarian approach. I think that's super freaking smart. You're getting omega threes. Um, but I also like all the different land animals as well. But if you're eating a lot of seafood, and some quality land animals, please prioritize regenerative agriculture. Guys, like I'm, this is my personal, like biggest passion, by the way, little spoiler alert. I'm trying to organize an event at the ranch at rep provisions ranch out in Oklahoma. So if anyone is interested in that DM me, um, Eric, the rancher is going to like show us not only what a regenerative ranch actually, what they do and how it works, but he's going to take us to a conventional ranch and show us how different that is. And then we're planning a little excursion up to, um, there's a nature preserve where they have preserved America's grasslands, what they looked like originally. So there's like thousands of Buffalo that roam it in tall grasses. And so we're going to get to see like, this is what it used to look like before the freaking genocide of Buffalo. Do you guys know this? They killed millions of Buffalo <laughs> when, when, when they settled the United States millions, it was like a Buffalo Holocaust, freaking crazy, like piles of them, you know, and the grasslands were so tall. And as just, and if you don't know about this, let me just tell you real quick. Basically what's happening is the way that we've like cleared out. So as you know, when you drive by like farms and stuff and it's just like dirt forever, acres and acres and acres of just like clean dirt. And you're like, Oh, I guess they're just waiting to grow something or whatever. When they do that, the, the, the soil starts to blow away into the, into the waterways, into the oceans, and we're losing topsoil. So what regenerative ranches do is they let it grow wild. And when that happens, all those little grasses and things that are growing, they help the water stay in the dirt and they help that, that grass, all the stuff coming down that's in the dirt that also keeps nutrients in the dirt and the cattle step on it and they're pushing and, you know, helping decompose those plants and they go back into the soil and it feeds itself that way versus this like stark 
clean, you know, <laughs> stuff that they're now that then they're trying to add nutrients back into the soil artificially, but they're too, the, um, the minerals and vitamins are too big for us to be able to absorb. And so all of our plants are becoming less nutritious. So we're like eating the calories, but not getting the nutrients. And it's just this huge problem. But biggest thing overall is that if we don't fix this, they say that we have about 60 harvests left before we won't have top, enough topsoil to feed the planet. So like, that's kind of a big deal. It supports all life on the planet. So it's pretty simple. All you have to, you don't have to become a regenerative rancher. You just buy food from them and they will freaking fix it. Um, pretty cool. So rep provisions, that's why I'm such a huge advocate of them. And if anybody's interested in coming out to that event, I'm trying to see if I can get some other health influencers and podcasters out there so they can educate their audiences as well. But I thought it would be cool to open it up to you guys too. If anybody wants to see what that's like, it's, um, we're not like, it's not going to be expensive. I'm not trying to charge money. I'm literally just trying to create awareness. So any cost would just be like at cost, whatever it costs for us to do the thing. Um, Eric, the rancher at rep provisions is like, like one of the best humans I've ever met to give you an example. So I'm going to rave for a second. Cause this is just so cool. He's committed to helping with the monarch butterfly migration. Do you guys know about this phenomenon? It's like they grow in like one field in Mexico that, or they're like born every year and they migrate across the United States into Canada. It's like this natural phenomenon and probably I'm sure it serves a purpose somehow that we don't even understand, but that's dying. We're losing the monarch butterflies. You know, those iconic like yellow butterflies, we're losing them because modern ranching practices in the United States, they're killing off the weeds that they eat. And so Eric, like one thing that Rep Provisions does is they like send out seeds for this plant that are like zoned for where you live <laughs> that will, and it says like, please go throw these out in your yard so we don't lose the monarch butterfly migration. Pretty freaking cool, huh? So, I mean, so many things. I'm such a fan, but anyway, had little, little rant on that. Um, garlic goes great with veggies. Yes. Onion and garlic do not like, if you can just take that's, that's been like a key thing for me losing my light in this, um, bikini prep is it just take like two seconds, what maybe two minutes max to chop up an onion game changer on your vegetables. It tastes so freaking good. And some garlic too. Yeah. Learn how to make your vegetables taste good. Um, I do, isn't that amazing about the butterfly seeds? Yeah. And they have something, they're doing something with like the, what's it called? What birds? It's like, not, it's not aver, aviary foundations. I forgot, I forgot what it's called, but they're doing something to help with preserving the birds and stuff too. I'm very, very excited to go out there because I'm going to try to get as much like awesome content as I can for you guys to, to show you like uh, to teach you more about regenerative ranching and why it's so important. Um, but yeah. Anyway, back to like making your vegetables taste good. Here's a few tips. Yeah. Fat makes vegetables taste really good. Um, I just saw tie mine up in like avocado oil spray, spray from primal kitchen right now. Cause I'm trying to actually be low fat from a bikini prompt, but adding onions, adding garlic. Also, um, the spices I like are Redmond real salts. They're all of their seasonings are like off the chain. They're so good. I pretty much just use those for everything. By the way, I changed the link in my bio, um, so it just goes straight to my website now, but all of my discounts are on my website. So just click the link, click partners and discounts, and any discount you want from me, they're all just right there. Um, so there's a discount with Redmond. Um, so I would recommend getting their garlic salt, onion salt, seasoning salt, and their garlic pepper and lemon pepper. Those things are freaking insane. They make everything taste good, and it's so fast. Um, cook mother tongue, Miles Snyder. He was on my podcast. Their seasoning blends are really good and just get creative. Like go to the grocery store, make sure it doesn't have MSG in it. But you know, like there's so many freaking spice spice blends at the grocery store. Now just put that experiment, just put that on there and you'll be like, Oh my gosh, these are so good. And you're all proud of yourself. And then you want to eat them more because you like them. All right. I think that's pretty much it. Thanks for tuning in guys. I'm going to go do workout number two here at the gym. <laughs> okay. Have a good night.